You're watching Force 13's live streaming service. Yes, again, you can see the view from Force 13 HQ. Still pitch darkness here. It will get light soon, believe it or not. My name's Nathan Foy. As we enter yet another hour, it's just turned 2 o'clock UTC, Tuesday, June 20th, as we uh, live out the last hours of the 19th over on Trinidad and Tobago and its neighbouring islands of the Windward Islands and on the coast of Venezuela, where there's a tropical storm warning in anticipation um, and... Uh, most of the former areas are now enduring um, Tropical Storm Brett and its latest um, flurry of um, convective activity that has occurred around the center of the cyclone in the last hour or two and we're continuing to monitor it. It's probably going to make landfall in this hour. We're also tracking a uh, tropical, potential tropical cyclone 3L in the Gulf of Mexico. A tropical storm warning is in effect in Louisiana, extending as watches in Texas. I'm joined, of course, by the Skype team for yet another hour. Uh, they provide very good company. There's no less than nine people in the room right now, so I hope they all behave well. Um, yes, we have let, school let's, children. Let, let's first... Uh, be fair as we can and uh, introduce the new people who have joined in this hour. Orlando, hello. If he's there, up to a good start, if not. We'll come back to Orlando. And Nelson is also with us, joining us from Louisiana. Are you under the warning? Uh, no, Nathan, I am not currently under the warning. The warning extends into the parish to my east, which is Plaquemines Parish, but not into Orleans Parish, where I am currently. Right. Are you under any flood watches or warnings as well? Uh, we are under flash flood watches at the moment. Mm, like many other locations. The echo is coming from Orlando, who must be here by now. Jeez, get a pair of headphones. <laughs> yes, I think he needs some. He's there somewhere. Oh, says I was gone. Leaving. Bye. You can also see John's face there, the very tiny face of John on the screen there. Um, there are people behind these oh. screens, believe it or not. It's remarkable, isn't it? Um, there are the actual humans. Uh, and John, if, if you could make yourself useful over there, why don't you read out the latest watches and warnings from the National Hurricane Center on both of these cyclones? Um, okay, I gotta pull them up. Easier said than done, is it? Uh, um, give me a second. I gotta go to the stream because they're on the stream. Okay, right. here we go. Okay. There's a tropical storm, which is Brett. Tropical storm warning um, for Trinidad and Tobago, um, Granada, Venezuela from Her Pendernalis to Cumana, including Isla the Margarita. I cannot say some of these things. Mm. Intracoastal city. And then, of course, there's a tropical storm watch for the ABC islands of Bonaire, Caraco, and Aruba. And for 03, a potential tropical cyclone 03L. You might be I'm, able to read these ones out properly, indeed. Yes, okay. because it's the United moment. States. <laughs> no. um, oh. For um, storms under threat from O3L, there is a tropical storm warning from Louisiana, in Louisiana to the mouth um, of the Pearl River. I'm, I'm guessing it's extending east or eastward from, um, actually westward from that point. Um, and there's a tropical storm watch. Um, Oh, crap. Um, I messed up because the rest of Intercoastal City was in Texas. My bad. Ignore yes. that. Um, because I thought there was something else. No, um, the Tropical Storm Watch extends from Intracoastal City, City to Highland, Texas. To, yeah. Highland, Texas. Yeah. Um, I would kind of love it if these were organized by storm, but that's okay. Um, doesn't matter. They still get out. We're so. confused enough, aren't we? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Marcel, Marcel wanted to speak. But so, so, for the easy part, all the coast of the of the of the Sucre State of Venezuela, and the North State have a tropical storm warning. 
That's right. Um, um, I'm curious. Um, is there anyone watching the stream? Um, that um, that is a uh, does not really know English very well, or is, is their main language which is Spanish? Maybe they can have. Maybe maybe. Marcel can read the warnings out in Spanish. Uh, I, I did maybe. consider that. We, we might do that at some point. Um, but yeah. uh, I think we've got an image here. What's this? This uh, mustn't be particularly recent. It's still daylight I, hours. There. I, I think we have viewers from Venezuela. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Are uh, you looking at my screen? Yes. Is okay, there, is, is no. there a story? Oh, there's a video. So this must have been from earlier because obviously it's still light Trinidad out. Trinidad, Tobago. Yes. It's only a short one. And you can see there the winds were seconds. the winds were beginning to pick up there. That is some six hours mm -hmm. ago by the looks of that tweet. Um, obviously um, things will have deteriorated more since then, particularly in the southeast. We're still waiting for more radar. Uh, um, landfalls expected this hour. Um, Marcel, could you possibly um, translate the text on that post below, please? Yeah. Possibly. Is that well? Well, um, sort, sort that out over, over in private somewhere. Anyway, we gotta okay. g let's see if we can get through some comments if there are any um, or questions or anything along those lines. Has ninety three L attained any circulation? Kind of. Kind of. It's not closed. But it's got some. No, it's how I say some. Some is got a yep. couple. Yep. Uh, someone else wants to know what are our predictions for July. Mm, probably a, another name storm or two. Maybe usually a, there's, there's usually a name storm every two years in July. Another like one. Thinking, on. There might be a track possibly similar to Claudette of 2003. That was a storm that traversed the Caribbean and moved into Texas as a weak hurricane in mid-July. Something possibly similar to that. Who knows, though? Maybe a bay and PG storm that no one sees coming. Yeah, there's always, there's always um, one. And someone else wanted to know whether, um, or, or suggesting the possibility that a 93L or 3L is whatever it's called is uh, losing organization at this point. I think it's gaining it. Yeah, I think it might be a trick of the nighttime infrared imagery there that might be causing that uh, assumption, yeah. maybe. Having so much clear, having so much clearer on the, on the visible. Nothing is developing. Wrapping in a bit. Yeah, it does look like this vorticity is getting a bit stronger. Um, how many times do you think Florida will be affected this year? A lot of people ask questions. I gotta say, we have more Florida-related questions than anywhere else on, on our streams. But, uh, Probably because you know, of the you, major you, hurricane everyone, drought. You know, people want to know, and uh, what are your guys' thoughts? Possibly. Uh, maybe a couple. Like, two. Yeah, kind maybe of. Last year, I guess. <laughs> Except last not, year they got, got whacked they got twice. Two, like, I mean... <laughs> they had they had the mess that was Colin, and they had her mean. <laughs> And Matthew. Oh, you forgot about Matthew, And Matthew. John. Goodness sake. But that one didn't make that one. Come on, Also, oh, three. My bad. <laughs> Two and a half. I mean, when I, think, when I think Matthew, I think Haiti and stuff, okay? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's understandable. Yeah. Just going it's, it's on that Florida been thread. Nine months that. Yes, Nelson. Sorry about that. Just going on that Florida thread at... Um, at about 7.04 p.m. Eastern Time, the NHC had extended the tropical storm warning to coastal Dixie, Jefferson, and Taylor in Florida. However, those tropical storm warnings have been discontinued as of 8.34 p.m. Central. I'm sorry, what? I didn't quite grasp that. What tropical storm warnings were? Uh, there were tropical storm uh, warnings for Coastal Dixie, Coastal Jefferson, and Coastal Taylor, Florida that were brought up possibly in error but have finally oh. been discontinued. Oh, how odd. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah it must have been. Um, Nelson, you're over in Louisiana, and uh, what is the current condition of the ground there and 
the possibility of 10 plus inches of rainfall. What would that mean? Um, it Well, as everybody should have figured out after Katrina, the city of New Orleans is a bowl that we have to pump water out of. Uh, we have had a lot of rain recently. Uh, it's been good for the plants, good for everything else. However, uh, street flooding is more likely, especially with 10 inches of rain. I can tell you from experience, if we get an inch of rain in an hour, there is street flooding. So 10 inches will be uh, extremely problematic, especially in the lower-lying areas of the city. And one thing I did note to uh, David before I joined the call was that um, a lot of the ditches and water drainage systems in New Orleans through neglect have been uh, overrun with sediment. So I actually spent the morning today digging out a two-foot ditch in my front yard to actually reach the culvert that leads to the sewer. So I am not worried about flooding in my part of my street, but I have neighbors that I know will get water up to their first step. I see. Well, that is very interesting indeed. And do you think across, I don't know, I don't know what, I'm guessing you, you've certainly got more knowledge of me of your area, but across the state and across neighboring states, do you think it's going to be a significant flooding event? I, I mean, I can't see it not being a significant flooding event unless it just tears itself apart. It's got a broad area of showers associated that will impact southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, Louisiana, regardless of how far west the actual center of the storm goes into western Louisiana or eastern Texas. So it, it is going to be a huge rainmaker, and you know coastal areas are always susceptible to rain because that's by nature where the water flows to. All right, very interesting stuff. Um, who'd like to go next at this point? I'm, I'm not, not really. Uh, I don't have much to say at this moment. Uh, don't forget the National Hurricane Center will be issuing new updates at the beginning of the next hour. Sometimes warnings do pop up before the National Hurricane Center makes their update, but I, I think it's a huge stretch to say that Florida is going to have tropical storm warnings, but you never know. It could be the case. I was surprised myself. Could be a hard right turn that <laughs> could not be anticipated. Well, well, just, just because of everything that's associated, it's a very broad on the eastern side of of. Three it's, L. Just, it's just ugh. looks horrible well, but it's a typical it, it, june mess it does but it's got you know it's it's got power with it and it's got lots of rainfall in with it there and it's got tropical storm force winds and well, and it's got a sense of circulation of sorts it's got what it needs yeah i'd say by 11 o'clock we could be looking at either one of two scenarios, one of them more likely than the other. Um, We could be looking at, most likely, Tropical Storm Cindy, or we could be looking at Tropical Depression 3L, as it might have weakened a slight bit trying to consolidate. It has has Tropical Storm Force winds. Who knows? It might might have weakened slightly due to it trying to organize and might consolidate. Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Uh, Last year, they would have named that by now, long before Yeah, uh, I'm calling... And they would have named um, uh, they would have named Brett much sooner as well. Yeah, they it's should have just, named Brett much sooner though. Mm. Yeah, but that one was Brett was warranted in mm. my opinion. But that is Brett, and the NC happened to be a lot more conservative this year than they used than they were last year. Last yeah, year they they, they were naming they were naming things left and they, right. They've almost gone to the other extreme. Uh, I need to call in David because uh, have you been reading any of the news from Trinidad recently? and uh, possible um, unconfirmed reports of uh, more than one building possibly going down. Uh, Thanks for that, Nathan. Unfortunately, I haven't got any updated information, but I am uh, monitoring quite a few accounts on the Twitter platform, and as soon as I cite something, I'll let you know. Someone just asking about storm surge as well from this 93L. Uh, We said earlier on it would probably be minor right it's not going to be that big of a deal because it's not this isn't going to be a wind maker wind is normally what drives storm surge wind ends the size of the storm 
And this storm is probably going to be pretty large, but it's not going to have the winds that it needs to make, create a big storm source. We're, we're probably looking at two feet at max. That's still a lot. That could still easily sweep, sweep a car away. But it probably won't. If, if it's only two feet, it's not going to make it far inland at all. But coastal flooding from both the ocean and the sky are going to be issues that we need to pay attention to. As you, can, as you should know by this point, water is the biggest killer with tropical cyclones. It's not the wind. It's almost 100% the water. And, and every, Go ahead. Uh, Hank, I just wanted to build on that uh, as you talk about the storm surge threat. After Hurricane Katrina, um, the areas around the city of New Orleans built what's called the Lake Bourne Storm Surge Barrier. It is a 14.5 billion dollar project including the upgrades to the um, New Orleans levy systems they have not closed that barrier for this storm yet I don't see why they would because if it if it's this a tropical storm like this probably won't do that much but if it's a large sprawling lumbering system that could possibly go subtropical they might need to do something because if it's not going to be ocean surge, it's going to be flooding that could do. It's not gonna, not saying it's going to break the levees. No, 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 no. I'm saying that it could cause some issues in the city. Now, New Orleans isn't in the direct path of the storm, but it is in the direct moisture flow in this storm because this storm is feeding all of its pretty much all of its moisture from the tropics, from basically. Yucatan Peninsula, Honduras, where this thing originated. And in fact, most of this moisture is, is actually generated by the storm itself that it left behind. And it's going to flow right up into, most likely going to flow right up into west, sorry, east of Louisiana, the Mississippi, Alabama, and western Florida. Now, it's probably going to be worse in Mississippi and Alabama than it is in eastern Louisiana, but you still need to watch out for these sorts of things because even because people tend to disregard tropical storms. They think, oh, it's just going to be a rainmaker. It's not going to be that big of a deal. Rain is wind. Most of the time it's worse. And yet, even though you don't have the dangerous winds and the dangerous winds that normal hurricanes do, flooding alone can be the biggest cyclones. Tropical, tropical storms, Alton and Erica proved that greatly in 2001 and 2015, respectively. That it doesn't take much to, to for a storm to sit over an area for hmm. for X amount of time and drop X amount of rainfall. I just want to uh, ask Joaquin, you. Example. I just want to ask you as well. Should uh, this system move further west? Uh, by the way, people watching, we are looking at two systems at a time here. We sort of flip between one and the other. We are monitoring both of them, hopefully equally. Uh, but 93L. Um, if it was to move further west towards Texas, are there any vulnerable places there right now? What do you What do you mean by vulnerable? To, to, towards flooding. Well, I mean, Louisiana is still recovering from the horrific flooding that they had last August. Yep. So that could be an area where they're still having to deal with the cleanup. And mm, yes. we also... I, I th go ahead. Uh, and just, Hank, going into the impacts on Texas, I think that the uh, storm would have to move far west of where it's predicted impact to cause any sort of issue for the port of Galveston. Am I correct? <coughs> well, the models are actually further west than the NHC cone. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this cone shift west in the next 30 minutes. So we have to keep in mind that... The center line only dictates where the center of the storm will go. The worst of the weather is not with the center for the storm. It's to the east of it, and possibly to the north if this thing actually does go subtropical. But regardless of where the storm goes, somewhere is one of the one of these areas is going to get a lot of rain and is going to possibly get some flash flooding. Now, that is assuming, of course, that the storm actually does hit this area could easily drift east, hit Florida. It could easily, you know, just fizzle out in the middle of the Gulf, though I think that's the least likely scenario at this point. But it's just... Storms like these need 
like I said, probably a little bit too much. Now. Storms like need to be watched. That's just the, that's my main point. The storms need to be watched, regardless yeah. if they're have high winds or not. They're still there. Yes, indeed, and John's fidgeting with stuff over there as well, which is drowning out oh. most of what Ang is saying. Uh, but we're also looking at Trivial Storm Brett right oh, now. Yes, just so you just so you're aware. That is good practice if people would kindly mute themselves when they're not speaking. Uh, there is Tropical Storm Brett, unless they wish to speak, of course, um, and would like to interrupt because obviously I can't see when you like to speak. But there we go. Um, Brett there on the imagery, the big towering thunder um, convection thunderstorm thing imagery that has just occurred in those last few hours, really over Trinidad now. Um, and we look towards the center of this storm, which is underneath that large thundercloud somewhere. And you can see it on this radar imagery here. And one or two more frames, if it draws closer, there's another one. I'd say possibly in the next two frames we could be calling a landfall on this. Um, by landfall, in our terms, we mean, um, we're, we're clear on this, we mean that if the center of the storm makes moves over land, we call it a landfall. Other agencies, including some official agencies, uh, differ with that. Um, when there's an eye present, it's usually just the edge of the eye. Uh, they call it a landfall, but we go with the center and the center is still offshore by I'd only say it's about l uh, five miles if that offshore at this present moment that's as of 15 minutes ago actually um, so it's very close to landfall not that it means particularly much of course because a landfall is just symbolic more than anything um, Obviously, you still feel the effects, regardless of whether the storm makes landfall or not. You can see some of those yellow and perhaps even orange areas on that radar imagery moving over land now. Um, and so the southern, you, know, you could say the southern half of Trinidad is going to be experiencing some pretty uh, inclement weather, the worst that the storm has to offer at this moment in time. Uh, yes, John. Yes, John. You can go now. Um, I was just waiting um, for you to finish up. Um, there's also a case that we wouldn't call we wouldn't call landfall by definition. If you remember last year, Nicole kind of scraped Bermuda, yes. didn't make a direct landfall. Yes. And I think that was um, reported in the NHC report as not a landfall. So yeah. it, the NHC kind of is strange in their landfall determinations. Well. If Nicole's eyes scrape Bermuda, then Matthew's eyes scrape Cape Canaveral. <laughs> so, <laughs> deviation. Uh, yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. You can say a land. You can say a, a not a landfall was worse than the landfall itself. <laughs> oh, depends. Depends on the situation. Totally depends. Totally depends on the situation. Uh, we've already had this question before, but we'll go through it again. Could 93L shift or move towards the east to, say, Florida? <laughs> oh my goodness. No, it's... Oh, no more, I, don't, please. I don't think it's very likely at this juncture. Because <sighs> if I can pull up my screen share very quick. And... Yeah, for steering current, you're not very supportive of that. You know, sometimes Skype is very frustrating yeah. and... It can be a bit of annoying sometimes, and that is the exact situation I'm going through right now. Yeah. So, right now, I have to leave the call very briefly yeah. just to fix we'll, this. We'll, we'll bear with I... that. We'll, we'll talk to Marcel in the meantime. Marcel, any thoughts on uh, on Brett right now and landfall imminent? Yes, landfall is imminent. I think that. Yes. Um, well, that was productive, wasn't it? <laughs> and I don't know I, if it... Go on. And I think this will be bring heavy rain to the, to, to the Trinidad and Tobago. Absolutely. And beyond as well, let's not forget. Um, Grenada, onto St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Venezuela. Um, I'm not sure how much rainfall is expected in those latter areas. It just said as a very general thing on the National Hurricane Center's website that would be between two and four inches. And you could probably add another one on there, make it five inches for some isolated areas. 
uh, that just happened to get the most amount of rainfall. But I'd say this big blow up here of convection, Trinidad will probably get the maximum there, won't they? I believe Orlando has joined us. Hello. Yes, you're joining us from... You're on the New Jersey side, aren't you? Yes, I am. Just about. Uh, any severe weather this afternoon or this evening, then? Um, yes, actually, there was severe mm, weather. There um, was. We were watching it. Yeah, there was a bit of debris. Um, there was a construction site for a new school building, um, and the fence blew off and hit my grandmother's house. And... Um, Basically, there it was just a bunch of mess, and then afterwards there was a bunch of rain that lasted for um, at least an hour, and um, our area is quite low lying, so it got flooded quite quickly. Wow! But at least um, the basements didn't um, get any water damage. That's good. Yes, indeed. I also noticed someone in the comments there asking about our potential credentials here as forecasters. as well. I don't think any of us have uh, any bona fide credentials, but uh, we do have the experience that comes with tracking storms for many years. Um, we've seen many situations like this in the past. We've tracked so many storms over time. We try and keep on top of all the information for you. Um, I personally, and this is a very personal thing, don't consider myself to be on the scientific side of things. I'm personally more on the broadcasting side of things. I think a lot of our members are at least aspiring to be on the scientific side of things. Um, I'm not sure what you guys I'm think about I'm working toward it myself. Yes. I'm going to college next fall, so I'm working to it myself. Yes, indeed. So uh, I'm so excited about that ladder as well. Mm. All right, it's so a long ladder. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully I can get that uh, Bachelor of Science in four years. <laughs> Hopefully. Very good. And you'll be working at the National Hurricane Center, no doubt. Yeah, I'll try to. I'll try to get a job there. <laughs> it's going to be that's, hard. The field, those, these I wonder if they'll have a questionnaire. I wonder if they'll have a questionnaire and on the questionnaire for your job interview. Was Colin a tropical storm, yes or no? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, obviously not. Oh, dear. No. Also taking it a bit no, too seriously. No, it's not. There. Yes. Tropical disturbance. All right. All right. Well, well, let's, tropical well, well, disturbance three L. Well, well, let's not get into that. <laughs> or, or, or a potential tropical cyclone three yeah, yeah, L twenty sixteen. Oh, no. It sure could have been. <laughs> um, we, we are. I, I do see everyone's comments, by the way, just about everything. Um, but um, obviously, uh, rainfall is increasing, as many people have uh, said so far, and, and and the radar clearly shows that that is occurring. Um, and the wind speeds yes. are, of course, going to be getting up probably near their peak now, you'd imagine. Yeah, pretty much. So. They'll be getting up there, more or less. Um, We're I just waiting for any more radar images to come out here, but nothing okay. to this end just yet. Um, but yeah, a landfall is, is imminent. Waiting for the NHC uh, update, which Indeed. will be soon. That hopefully. will also be coming through in about 30 minutes. Well, within 30 minutes. Oh, about 30, action. yeah. Probably, probably closer to 20. Doesn't matter, though. And, of course, as soon as the update comes through, we'll bring it to you. I think ASCAP might have been due around now as well, or may have already gone by. Let's see if we've got the ASCAP pass, the satellite in the sky that tells us how strong a particular storm is or whether it's got circulation, gives an estimate on the satellite. It's still not in yet. It'll be around an hour for uh, Brett and probably another two hours for... Uh, further, two hours, further two hours oh. for O3L, indeed. Because it circulates on a globe like an angle or something. I did also see one or two mentions about this wave moving off Africa. It's not going to do much, we don't believe. Just in case anyone is interested, ASCAT has winds of around 20 miles per hour in that. Yeah. We'll see what happens in a couple of days. See if it does a Brit. <laughs> I don't think it will, though. No, it's going to die in the Saharan earlier. 
Yeah, SAL is impressive right now. Yeah, well, that's what you would expect for this time of year. Like, Brett was just lucky that it was at such a low latitude, and the SAL wasn't really that strong. That wasn't that strong, and it increased after it left that area. So it was at low enough latitude with little influence that it got a chance to really get its act together. And here you go. You had a tropical storm hitting Trinidad in hmm. June. I hard for me to swallow that. But oh. well, I guess it's definitely going to be a, uh... Um, one for the record books, even though there's not really record setting in terms of strength. Of course, but there are a few, uh, oh, not too many that have preceded this one, indeed. It's a very rare scenario, especially rare in June, I might add. Yeah. Actually, Brett's made the record books. It was the first one in 160 phrase. Well, well surely, he yeah, in, in some way... People can find a record for anything, indeed. Um, is it the lowest latitude forming system right now or in the Atlantic? Is the door of 1990 was a bit further south than this. Okay, I'll look it up. Let's see. I think that formed at like 8 north. This, and this one's about, about 9. Yeah, this, this one was about 8.5, I think. I think, uh, well, yeah, officially, but uh, when Force 13 first designated, it was 7 point something. Yeah, I think... I think 7 well, point... Yeah, I think, seven. in fact, they issued the first um, potential cyclone, I think. It was 7.5 when they first did those. But would that count, though? In fact, let me, let me look through my record to see how low Isidore was. Um, seven point two. Seven point two. Wow. Seven. Let's see. I have seven point two as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, even if it was, we are counting the PTC designation. It still doesn't count for the lowest. Jeez. So as you can see, uh, we've got the latest radar. Still no more developments on that yet. We're expecting a landfall very soon indeed. We're pretty much waiting confirmation to be honest. There's the latest satellite picture of Tropical Storm Brett, and we expect updates from the National Hurricane Center very soon. Half an hour. Should we, should we go through some of the models right now? We haven't done that in a while. I guess we may as well. All right. I'm sure John will have a few things to say about them too. John did go through one or two models, but uh, it's always nice to have um, some other perspectives as well. So this is the GFS model. Really quickly, it shows. Just for some perspective, this is O3L slash PTC3. This is Brett. Um, this is what the GFS model said. It deepens Brett a bit more to 1002, and it makes Cind what is probably Cindy by this point a broad but closed tropical storm with pressure of 996 millibars. It intensifies that a little bit, becomes western bound, while Brett dies out in the eastern Caribbean and makes it have, and gives it a landfall in western Louisiana as a minimal tropical storm and then dies out over the U.S. That's the D, that's the GFS, the ECMWF bottle. Uh, by the way, if you're curious what source this is, this is Tropical Tidbits. Um, this is an unofficial source, um, but I highly recommend you check it out if you haven't already. Great source for modeling and recon and storm information, all that stuff. All that stuff. Great source. Anyways, the ECMWF model... Says that this it doesn't pick up Brett that much, but it says that o, no, O3L, I guess, will become a tropical storm as it moves farther west in the GFS, but then immediately moves it north and make it, makes it have a landfall near Galveston as a weaker system, and then moves it on out to sea after it moves across the U.S. Oh, Hank. Yes. I'm look I'm looking at the ECMWF and I'm noticing a little spin up um in the uh, eastern and the western Atlantic um almost at the same latitude as North Carolina go out a little bit about six yeah, west. I, I see what you're talking about. That's probably not a tropical storm. That's also a week out, so it's very hard to detail. I don't think that's anything to to be honest with you. 
Yeah. It could be. It's, I, was, I just it's, thought it would be interesting to know. Yeah. So this is the GFS parallel model. And this is this one, sh I think, really wants to blow up Brett. That's 996 millibars right there. That's a very compact tropical storm. Let me see how strong the winds are. Those are probably about 50 knot winds. So that's about 60 miles an hour. That's an outside shot, but, you know, anything is possible. And then it completely falls apart after that. Cindy, other, or what will be Cindy on the other hand, most likely. Um, Ooh, 986. Yeah, also the, it also blows it up a bit. And then it, Ooh, oh, 93. And then moves it just south of Lake Charles. I for swear. I swear that that pressure correlates with very strong tropical storm week hurricane. I need to look at the wind on that. It's up here right now, John. It shows about 55 knots, so 65 miles an hour. Ooh. So the CMC is showing... Not picking was, up I, I had the nail on the head saying strong TS, at least. <laughs> yeah. CMC has a more spread out system. We weaker winds, but lower pressure. That's probably subtropical. In fact, taking a look at the simulated satellite imagery, yep, that's certainly subtropical. Oh, yes. And then does the same thing as the ECMWF. It hooks it north pretty quickly and makes a landfall around Houston and Galveston and then moves it on out to sea. So that's what, this, that's what the CMC model says. NABGEM says that I'm going to change parameters here. NAVGEM says that this will also move pretty far west, but then weakens it a little bit, or not a little bit, actually quite considerably, as it makes landfall just... That's around Matagorda in Texas. And then, very and weak. Then, yeah. Like a TD. That could be a very weak tropical storm. So that's those are the main models of HWRF for this storm. It's farther out than the last time I checked, so... This is probably going to be a bit more accurate. So it may, makes it move really close to Louisiana, actually. It's very broad. And it moves it pretty much right into Morgan City, or New Iberia. And then moves it inland and dissipates it. For, that's the, whoops. For Brett, it probably doesn't show much. It's showing, yeah, making, it interacts too much with Venezuela and fizzles out. So for the NAM model, this is going to be interesting. Um, if we check this parameter, it shows the I, I think you should check, um, NAM 3KM. I think that might be a bit better. You can zoom in much more easier. Yeah, I'll check all, I'll check all three. Um, but this is the 32KM. And it also shows Brett fizzling out. And it shows... 93L hitting Houston and Galveston as well as a minimal tropical storm. So that's a few now saying Texas. No, whoa, 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 whoa. I would say that, um, my goodness, that looks like a well-organized tropical storm. It's yeah, bringing it into. But wait till we see these other models, John. Now, check the wind. Uh, let to me the interrupt right. first because there is an update for... Uh, Cyclone 3, potential Cyclone 3 from the National Hurricane Center. No change as far as I can see, apart from its movement, which is now north, uh, north northwest at 8 miles per hour, 40 miles an hour, 1,000 millibars, not a tropical cyclone. Warnings have not changed. Okay. So Brett should come up pretty soon, yes. but before it does, let's just, just go through this really quick. This is the NAM 12 kilometer has hour by hour imagery. Interesting little location feature right there. That might be center relocation. Now, note the wind key to the right. This is a weak tropical storm at landfall. And that's also in Houston and Galveston. So that's a little bit concerning. Uh, I think that the, let's see, what do you call it? The forecast cone should come out pretty soon for that system. This is the NAN three kilometer, as Orlando was mentioning earlier, showing. Moderate, tr moderate, strong tropical storm move in this area, but then it ends at 35 hours because the run doesn't go out that far. So we go um, back. H HRRR says 95 and, and 60 mm -hmm. knots. Yeah, now here I we go. Wanna, I just want to say nothing special with the new forecast cone 
Oh no, still not changed yet. Um, but as far as I could see from the forecast advisory, it still didn't look like anything special from them, anything new really. Now here's now here's this is interesting. It's showing a hurricane with nine hundred if oh my nine sixty eight millibar oh, pressure goodness. moving right into the right into Port Arthur in about sixty hours. So that's interesting. Well, on this system. Yeah, and HR only goes out eighteen hours and is probably just. Yeah, it's just messing with the parameters, really. Uh, I think this one might show some interesting perspective, though I don't think it'll go far out enough. If the well, the hours would load. Yeah, it doesn't go okay. far out enough to show as much. And then our gem is the last one I'll show you. Also oh. tries to make this a weak tropical storm, maybe a little, a little moderate tropical storm, and then weakens it considerably. Well, those are the models. Um, Hank, following up on that, the wind speed probabilities have been issued for uh, three UTC regarding uh, potential tropical cyclone uh, three. Uh, they have issued, let's see, Buras, Louisiana, cumulative 14% of tropical storm winds. New Orleans, Louisiana, cumulative of 13% tropical storm winds. Morgan City, Louisiana, cumulative 26%. New Iberia, 27%. Um, going down Port Arthur, Texas, 24% of tropical storm force winds and 3% of 50 knot winds. Galveston, 20%, 3%. And High Island, Texas, 23%, 3%. Okay. So, so what he's saying is that He's saying a percentage first and percentage second. The first percentage means 34 knot winds, and the second and percentage... I have to interrupt for an update on Brett. No changes in the watches and warnings. It's still at 40 miles per hour, um, and really not much change there, apart from the wind field, which seems to have shrunk slightly, 70 miles out to the northeast and northwest, 1,008 millibars, 10.0 north, 61.3 west. Um, I'm still waiting for landfall confirmation from radar, but it, the radar appears to have stopped responding now uh, for some reason. I doubt it would have been knocked out. Um, it's extremely close to landfall if it hasn't done so by now um, on the southeastern corner, really, of Trinidad. Um, we are pretty much about to confirm a landfall very, very oh, soon I indeed. I would say it's still 45, in my honest opinion. It's what? I would still say it's 45, in my honest opinion. Yeah, same. I don't think... Okay. Well, um, they still haven't updated the, uh, the forecast yet on their graphic. That will happen momentarily. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> or hopefully, or never, or we'll first not pay attention... <laughs> so that is the news quite underwhelming actually if anything because nothing really has changed we're sort of still where we were only that landfall on Trinidad is expected at any time and the only good thing about that is that uh, it can't get any worse when that becomes a reality uh, than what the conditions will be by then um, um, how much do you think that it will weaken because of its interaction with Trinidad? Well, it can't weaken best. much more than, than it is. But mm, it, 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 is, it, it may as well be making landfall right now. Um, you could say it is in the act of making a landfall, uh, but we still don't yet have the confirmation for that just yet. Otherwise, we'll announce it. Uh, but yep. still 1,008 millibars for Brett. It's maintained intensity and... I think everyone over there knows it because they're feeling it. Um, David, are you with us? Uh, yes, just uh, watching on the news from uh, Trinidad. Uh, gusty winds, torrential showers began uh, pounding the eastern swath of Trinidad last night. Uh, reports of fallen power li uh, trees, power lines, roofs uh, torn off, flash flooding, 
and uh, roofs uprooted in some places, trees crashing. We mate mate a lot, mate lot so trees in the northeastern. Yeah, so there is a bit of damage. And uh, the Ministry of Education announced that all schools would remain closed. Yep. But exactly what has occurred is still unknown yet. Um, but it sounds as though there is at least minor damage that has occurred and at least one building, uh, one dwelling has uh, succumbed to the storm so far. And that person being hospitalised. Yes. Nathan, may I ask a question of the group? Yes. It, it seems I, I've re-reviewed the wind speed probabilities uh, for potential tropical cyclone uh, 93L, and they've all shifted west considerably. Mm. Now, given that the models seem to show a strengthening storm, would you imagine that a lot of the convection that would have impacted the eastern area of the storm will become wrapped into the center of the storm and make it more compact? Or will it just have greater winds at that very center but keep a uh, very, very wide presence? Anyone? <laughs> well, um... Well, I, I personally think that um, it might actually have um, two separate areas that later on it might affect, like, how some of um, the MISO scale models have been saying. It basically divides the systems into, like, two sections. One that seems sort of similar to, like, a squall line, and the other which is the main storm, which causes basically... Um, more difficulty and um, on tracking which area is going to be hit the hardest because you have two areas that are heavily impacting one which is key with rain and the other that has a lot of wind to it. So um, uh, with that being said it might try to make the storm more compact um, or I it might not, but so I might it be the, it's not going to make anything better. Might it be the difference between it being uh, tropical and subtropical then, or extra tropical? Well, I I don't think it's going to become like extra tropical or tropical at least until it makes landfall. But. Uh, Basically anything can go, but that's I think is one of the lowest probabilities at the moment. All right, thank you. Um, I don't suppose Marcel is with us right now. Yes, I am here. Um, because uh, Venezuela and uh, other Spanish-speaking locations may be interested interest with this storm. Would you like to possibly do an update in Spanish for us at the end of this hour? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, uh, we'll do that in just a few moments' time as we close out the end of a, another hour of streaming, uh, just so that the notice is there. Um, but the latest, if you've just joined us, is that Brett formed um, about six hours ago. That's when we began this stream. Mm -hmm. um, and it still is with us. It's got 40 mile an hour winds. It's got a pressure of 1,008 millibars, and its landfall is due at any time. Confirmation is very close for this landfall, but not quite there yet. As for 93L, they haven't changed it really um, in the latest update. 1,000 millibars likely to deepen could become subtropical, could be tropical, looks like it's heading towards the northwest, um, and it could be a significant rain event for Louisiana, maybe Texas, um, and then into Mississippi, Alabama, and even into the Florida Panhandle and Georgia. 
And uh, I'm not sure if anyone would like to say anything else right now. If you've got any questions or comments for us, by the way, uh, do send us a message. We do like it to interact. Um, start your message with Force 13. It will light up nicely for me. And you can also find us on all of our mediums as well. Fool13 on Skype is my name, F O O L 13. And you can add extension 9094 on Discord for Tropical Weather Chat. We have our own chat rooms on there as well if you'd like to get involved in the conversation or just to get your updates um, as time goes on. But uh, that's where you can go as well as our social platforms too. I hear some birds chirping. Yes, that is correct. Uh, you can take a look at the live scene at Force 13 HQ at this moment in time. It's getting fairly light here. Um, a low temperature tonight of what well, looks like it, our low is going to be around 61 degrees, which is almost as high as our typical daily high in June. So it's been pretty warm yeah, at least not recently. Degree heat. Mm, certainly, but uh, it is. Uh, relative to average, uh, quite an anomaly that we've had in recent days. Well, this is just getting at... warmer and warmer up there in good old land of England. Yeah, just for a few days. And then it's going to cool yep. down. Anyway. Oh, nice. I'm, Nathan, I'm looking at, uh... we... Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. No, go ahead. No. Uh, awesome. Just before we end the hour, Nathan, from New Orleans, it is 83 degrees. We have had a change in the winds. It is now coming from the northeast, uh, five to six miles an hour and then dying down. But it is certainly seen a change of winds here. Mm. Well, thank you very much um, for that. Go ahead. Oh, I'm looking at the live camera right now over in... Uh, Straight out right now, and it seems it's raining right there, and they're getting a, a little fairly, <laughs> not, not, not that much wind or whatever. They can see the palm trees <laughs> every once in a while, and there's a cop yeah. car going on through. Okay. So, significant <laughs> rainfall occurring, and winds are variable. Yeah, it okay. seems right now, and uh, police p patrolling the streets, obviously, to, I guess, make sure people are inside. Right. So. Marcel, would you like to, at this point, give us uh, an update on Brett in Spanish for our Spanish audience, <laughs> if you may? Okay. That's good. Can you start now? Yes. Pues bueno. Pues le vamos a nuestra, nuestra actualización en la tormenta tropical Brett, que se encuentra en que el su, en que su centro se encuentra a 10 grados latitud norte 61,3 grados de latitud latitud oeste y tiene y tiene vientos de y tiene vientos de, de 65 kilómetros por hora y una presión mínima de una presión mínima de 1008 milibares y, y y se está moviendo al 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 oeste noroeste a 23 millas por hora o sea 23 millas por hora y pues bueno hay un hay una alerta de tormenta tropical desde, des, desde Pedernales en el estado del Tamacuro hasta Cumaná en el estado en el estado Sucre y, y también la, la isla Margarita que es el estado Nueva Esparta también tam, también tiene alerta de tormenta tropical y, y pues podemos podemos ver que que la tormenta está está que la tormenta está haciendo está tocando tierra justo en este momento en Trinidad y Tobago y puede que en las próximas horas llegue a las costas venezolanas trayendo trayen, trayendo vientos de tormenta tropical y, y aproximadamente de 2 a 4 pulgadas de lluvia y pues bueno y pues cr creo que también pues bueno pues creo que, que, el, que la lluvia y y los vientos puede llegar a afectar la, el estado Sucre, el estado Nueva Esparta y también los estados Monaga, las costas de los estados Monagas y el Tamacuro y hasta puede llegar y hasta puede llegar al, al, a Puerto de la Cruz y Barcelona en el estado Anzuategui. Y esto fue y ya esto fue todo. The only thing is I can't tell when he's finished. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Is that everything? Wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much for that. That was for 
the courtesy of our of any viewers uh, who are Spanish perhaps um, who are watching the stream and now we're finishing up the hour and um, it's been another one that we've done and we're going to continue to stay with you uh, whilst the threat remains for Trinidad and Tobago and beyond we'll leave you for now with the live scene at Force 13 HQ and the beautiful morning chorus We'll be back in five minutes with more information on these two storms and the latest. Stay tuned. It's safe to you.